Welcome back! Today on Dialed In DIY, I'm electrifying an Altoids tin to turn it into a multi-tool that has a lot of fun uses. I built one of these a couple years back and I've been finding a lot more ways to use it ever since as a fire starter, a remote igniter, a power supply, and so much more. You can see in the inset pictures the materials you're going to need and I'm going to be describing these as I go along through the build, but a more complete list is in the description below. Today, I'm repeating the build that you see here that I made a couple years back. I do want to advise, this is a fire hazard, so make sure you have the appropriate precautions ready. Step one is to mark some holes that we're going to drill. The first two in the lid are for switches that we're going to add, and then I'm going to put two more on the side, on the inside part, for a couple of electrodes that we're going to add later as well. The small push button is going about a quarter of an inch from one end, and the other larger rocker switch is going to go as far back as I can push it to the other end of the lid. Start your holes for the electrodes. I do find that some kind of a punch, like a screw, a nail, or something like that, makes it much easier to get started, and then you can go back and drill out the size exactly as you need. To get the holes the size you need them, you can grind them out, cut them out, or drill them out using a graduated drill bit like I'm doing here. The key is to go slow as you expand the hole and test for fit. You don't want to over drill the hole, you want things to fit snug. Once you're satisfied with the size of the holes that you've made, you want to go back and either sand them off, grind them off, or just in general get rid of any burrs that can be sharp. You want to be careful so that you don't get cut as you continue with this build. The next thing you're going to need for this project are a couple of plastic pens that have screw off removable tips. You're going to see we're going to come back down the end of the body a little bit just below the tip and cut it off with a hacksaw. Particular pens that I'm using happen to have a grip on them which don't add any extra function. I just like the way they look. Once I have them cut off, I go back down and sand off any rough edges until I get them nice and smooth and give them a nice clean look. Anytime you're cutting or sanding on plastics, you're going to end up with some debris left over on the inside and we do want to go back and clean that out before we continue. To improve the performance of our new tool when we're done, I do want to line the bottom with some kind of a non-conductive material. I just happen to have this perfect kind of craft foam-like paper that is going to work wonders for this. Later in the build, you're going to see how this helps us to prevent some accidental short circuits when we use our tool. Once I have that sized right, I go ahead and pull the foam back out and then I put the pen tips through, tip first from the inside, and then screw the tops back on to make sure I have a nice secure fit. Once I'm confident that everything looks good, I go ahead and put that foam back in and slide it right underneath the tips of the pen and continue with the build. For the actual electrodes, I'm just using some really thick gauge copper wire that fits perfectly inside of these pen tips. It also does not have any protective coating on the outside, which is exactly how we want it. I'm then adding some much finer gauged braided wire to this push button switch. It's actually a momentary switch that when you push it down, it completes the circuit and the power goes on, but when you let go, the power goes back off. Even though I twisted the wire through the holes in the posts on the switch, I did go ahead and solder it in place just for some extra security. I then did the same thing with the rocker switch. It's time to go ahead and pull those copper wire electrodes back out and bend a nice tight little loop in the end of each one. We're going to then add the braided wire to each of these as well and solder those in place too. On a lot of these projects, I like to use salvaged parts. However, both of the switches I'm using today, I got a long time ago at Radio Shack, so I'm going to go ahead and use those. Once I have it secure with the nut that came with it, I turn it back over and I'm bending the posts apart from each other, so that way when I close the lid, everything will clear and there won't be any obstruction to closing it. Further help reduce the potential for any short circuits in this project, I am covering any exposed post or wire with this heat shrink tubing, but you could also use electrical tape. I did find that the hole I drilled for the rocker switch was just a little too big, so I'm grabbing some Gorilla Tape, but you could also use duct tape, and I'm just wrapping it around the rocker switch and then putting it back in and finding that was enough to keep everything firm. I'm now going to go ahead and take both of the electrodes and push them through the pen tips from the inside, leaving the wires that I connected on the inside of the Altoids tin. We're going to be completing this with a 9 volt battery connector, but I want to leave it flexible so that I can change up to a different battery pack in the future if I want, and I'm going to do that by using Quick Connects. You can follow the on-screen instructions to duplicate this if you want, but just know that if you want to twist the wires together and wrap them in electrical tape, it works just as well. A little user tip though, if you're using the Quick Connects, do notice that there is a male and a female connector, and you need to make sure that you always have them lined up one of each 
in each connection that you're going to have. For whichever battery pack you choose to use, all you need to do is take one wire and connect it to any of the leads on the momentary switch, and then take the other wire and connect it to any of the leads on the rocker switch. You should now have one free wire coming off of each of the switches. Take one of those wires and connect it to one of the electrodes. Then go ahead and take the remaining free switch wire and connect it to your second electrode. You can now go ahead and connect the battery and then carefully tuck all the wires on the inside. You can see how that foam on the bottom is going to help make sure that none of our wires are shorting out against the case. Now that the build is done, let's have some fun. Get to a fire safe location and grab some fine or extra fine steel wool. Put it down, attach the electrodes to it, and push your button and it sparks up and is really cool looking. Oh, and an important thing to note is depending upon where you live and what your skill levels happen to be, this is a part where it's important to have some good responsible supervision ready. Ready to add some more functionality? It's easy to do. Just grab a couple of these alligator clips and put them on your electrodes. These happen to have screws that help you to tighten them down and remove them later when you want to. You can now use this for the very reason I designed it to begin with, as a remote ignition system for something like model rockets. You can just connect some wires and you also have a perfect little battery pack that's switched. In fact, if you leave the momentary switch off, it works even easier for that purpose. Grab some foil gum wrappers and you also have a perfect little fire starter. Hold it under some tinder or other flammable material before you press the button and you're good to go. The reason this works is because you've created a little bit of an hour shape design in the foil, the foil short circuits and then the paper begins to burn once the foil gets hot. But wait, there's more. You can do the same thing with a little bit of the steel wool. You would be amazed at how many times you can repeat this with just one steel wool pad. But if that's not flashy enough for you, grab a wad of the steel wool and spark it up with your electrodes. It's a rather fun and fascinating thing to watch. But please just don't think I'm playing here. There's actually some other benefits for doing this as well. With just a little bit of a breeze or blowing, you can get it glowing really hot, which is great for starting a fire in damp conditions. If your conditions require a little extra help, you can put a few drops of fuel underneath it, spark it up, and then blow on it a little bit, and it will flame up for you. If you're looking to get a little bit more of a coal effect, all you have to do is pack the steel wool a little bit tighter and repeat the same process, but without the fuel. And when you're done and the steel wool is cooled off, Save the dust that you find underneath it. It's good for some other projects or just having some fun. But hey, I think that's a topic for a future video. Hey, thank you for stopping by Dialed and DIY today. I really do appreciate you taking the time to watch my video. If you enjoyed it, please let me know with a thumbs up. And if you have the opportunity, go ahead and subscribe while you're here too. Want to see more like this? Check out some of my playlists and come on back because believe me, I've got plenty of dialed in DIY videos yet to come.